In this video, we're going to demonstrate how to change out a pump for the M4 sprayer. It's fairly straightforward. You just need a Phillips, standard Phillips screwdriver and some needle nose pliers. So the first thing you want to do is pop open the battery door. There's a battery strap that you want to undo. Pull out the battery. Sometimes it's a little bit tight. It's got some fairly tight guides in there to keep it from moving. Undo the battery terminals. Okay. And we're going to turn it up on its side. And we're going to remove seven standard Phillips screws. And we're not going to force you to watch each one, the removal of each one, but we will demonstrate that they are they are fairly deep, so you're going to need a long Phillips screwdriver to reach them. And this is kind of a handy one. We're using a cobalt with a ratchet action. Um, you probably don't want to use an electric screwdriver because there's a chance that you'll strip the screw. So, and the, so these are deeper screws. Uh, they're more structural. They hold the bottom of the plate in right where the battery is. And then these outside screws are uh, more cosmetic. Okay, we just removed the screws, and by the way, we didn't mention that this is probably the most time-consuming part of the whole operation, is removing these seven screws. It took a couple of minutes, and so we're just, we just pull that off, and this has posts that line up with posts in the base. Okay, so now here's fairly simple. Um, there's the pump that we're going to be replacing. Uh, this is the charger port panel. This is the rotary switch, and then the... the uh, toggle switch is above that so it's all fairly straightforward okay then going forward the good news is there's only three mount screws they're again they're standard Phillips and they're holding some uh, rubber feet into the onto the base uh, that makes it shock proof it protects the motor from from damage getting cracked so and I'm probably uh, the order that you do this probably isn't terribly critical. You can either take these screws out now or later. But there's just three of them. It's it's not symmetric. Some people expect to, there to be a fourth foot down there, but it doesn't fit. And you only need three to keep it stable. It's also held in place by the neck. The neck of the motor comes through here. This, the, the threads from the motor are actually the threads that you attach the hose to. So... Okay, we just removed the three mounting screws in the rubber feet of the motor. Just wanted to show you uh, how simple it is to change out the uh, the wiring for it now. Uh, the, the motor only has two wires that go to it. A red, which is positive, and of course the ground, which is the, the wire that the switches uh, complete the circuit to to turn the, the pump on. And uh, we'll we'll take those off in a second. The only other thing you have to worry about disconnecting is the elbow. <clears throat> the elbow is attached to the intake of the pump. So uh, this is why we need needle nose pliers. And uh, there's no need to have uh, a hose clamp, you notice, is attached to the, the, the tank nipple. Um, that's required because you need a little bit more grip, grip power to get that seal. This, on the other hand, is a barb connection. So the only thing you really need, to, and we never get, we never get leaks there. Well, occasionally we'll have leaks here that are fixed, repaired by uh, just tightening that up. So you see how that comes off. Now, this is a thermoplastic. So if if it's too hard to, to pull the motor out, which this might end up being, um, you can always take a heat gun to it, and it makes this this elbow a lot more pliable. So and then of course you, we you, see so way to get that out is just to push those threads through the hole, and I'm trying to make it look easy. There we go. A little bit of work required to pop that out. So once that's once you once you've got it out. No. <laughs> okay, so we just showed you how it could be a little bit challenging to get that pulled out of there if you get the elbow removed. Um, so what we're going to show is how to use a heat gun to uh, heat up that portion of the elbow, and and it should come out very easily. So we'll start. Just get the heat gun as close as you can. You don't want to leave it there too long. And this, this heat gun's a little bit wimpy, so we've got to leave it there for a little bit longer. And 
just a couple more seconds. Okay, let's see if that helps getting that off. Much easier. Okay, so the only thing left to do is uh, undo these wires. And uh, it's a little bit tricky if you... Um, so the red bundle, the red wire from the motor goes to the main red bundle. So you just basically undo that electric and electrics, electrician's nut. That comes off real easy. And it's a good practice just to screw that back on. The black is a little bit uh, more important to remember where that goes. So there's actually two bundles where black wires go. Just remember the motor wire goes to the, the, the bundle with the three blue wires. It's the only black wire that goes, goes into that bundle. So you take that off and uh, then you want to replace that to keep everything together. And these are the signal wires, by the way, um, from, the, from the switches. Uh, actually, two are signal wires from the, the switches, and one is the blue wire, the ground wire, to the voltmeter. Um, and this, this particular system is wired in parallel. Anyway, so there you have it. Um, the motor is uh, completely out. Now, uh, the reverse operation is, is how you put it in, and we're going to go through that too, just in case uh, there's something new we can show you. Okay, we just showed how to take the, the motor out of the base. Uh, we wanted to show you, how you what a motor looks like when you receive it in the, in the uh, mail. Uh, it ends up, when you get the, the motor, it's going to have two end caps, one on the barb connection, and this is for the white tank. For the blue tank, it's going to have two threads coming off of either side of the pump head. In this case, you're going to have a barb cover and it's going to, you're going to get some moisture coming out of there and that's deliberate. The reason the, that it's, it's shipped with these caps and moisture is so that the, the diaphragm can achieve a, a, a vacuum. It can actually prime a lot easier when the diaphragm is wet. And by the way, if, if, you're, if your motor is having trouble priming after a while, um, you'll need to make sure to get some moisture in there, and you may have to open it up and, and uh, physically, uh, directly put some moisture in there. So I just took the end caps off of these. If uh, We've occasionally made the mistake of, uh, this cap's easier to catch. You'll, you'll notice that you can't put the hose on there without taking this off. On this side, many times, or sometimes, we've noticed that uh, when we put it on, it we don't get any flow, and we think something's wrong with the pump, but uh, just double check and make sure this cap is off. Obviously, that'll that'll prevent it from flowing. It'll you might think the pump isn't working. Okay, I've taken it out now. To show you how easy it is, we're going to put it back in, and uh, we may fast motion this just to save you some time. But uh, the sequence of uh, operation. Usually, I like to load the uh, barb intake into the uh, elbow first. And then pop the uh, pop the threads through the hole. And that seemed pretty easy. And then uh, we're going to put the mounting screws in. And I think they're interchangeable with the screws we took out. Of course, we'll change the direction of the ratchet on the Phillips screwdriver. There we go. So really not, not too bad. Okay, we also forgot to mention you can do this in, in any orientation, vertical or flat. We kind of I kind of like doing it uh, in, uh, in, in, during some of the process. I like to have it flat and then when you know you get access to the elbow and things, I like to have it uh, upright. It doesn't really sit upright easily. Uh, you, a lot of times it's, it's better to have a box or something holding this. But, um, so all I'm going to do here is you just squeeze the spring clamp, pops over, and that's going to give you a, a really good seal. That's a good, good enough. And we're almost done. We just go back. Remember, uh, the signal wires get attached to the negative side of the motor. All right. And this may or may not be all blue, all this many blue wires. Sometimes the only blue wire uh, attached to the motor wire is from the rotary switch. That's if it's in series. In fact, I think that's the latest shipment is the more common configuration. 
Um, so, and then this uh, red red wire gets attached to the the only bundle of red wires. Um, that, that's a direct connection to the battery positive, and that's about all as many wires you could fit in that size nut. Make sure it's good and tight. Press down, rotate till it's secure, and uh, then what we'll do is pop that on and. Also make sure that these uh, nuts are recessed and, and back here where they're not going to interfere with the battery. Probably want to put them over here instead. There we go. Okay, so we're that's about it. Then we'll go ahead and put the bottom plate on. Okay, we wanted to show you some of the details of the switches. The the three the three switches the the, two, the charger panel, the rotary switch, and the toggle switch. Um, we've, we've got them installed here, and I'm going to show you what they look like out, out off of the panel. Very simple. Uh, the red switch has a blue and a black, and this is just completing the ground circuit when you, when you toggle between the zero and the one. Um, and then here's the charger panel. It's got the three terminals. Really, only two of them are active right now, so the, the two... Uh, the two widest ones furthest apart, and you can see that uh, one one terminal goes to the positive side of the battery. And then the other side, the other side goes to the negative side of the battery. But the uh, the negative side going to the rest of the system that's powering the base is going through the fuse. So you can see where that circuit completes. Through here, it comes in goes in this side of the fuse, comes out on that side of the fuse. So you've got uh, a couple of fuses in here. One of them is the active fuse, and the other one is the spare fuse. Then here's kind of the more, more, most uh, sophisticated uh, fu uh, switch in there. And we call this the rotary pulse width modulation circuit. This is what mod uh, allows you to change the rotational speed of your pump motor. And it, that way you can vary the flow rate. When you, when, and you'll, it, it's an on-off switch, so you've got to Remember now, you've got to actually click it on, and then when, when you start to rotate it clockwise, it goes from about 20% to 100% flow. The red switch going from this, the, sorry, the red wire coming from this switch goes to the battery positive. The black wire coming from this switch uh, actually could either go to directly to the battery if, if it's wired in series, in parallel, or this is... This gets connected to the blue switch of the red of of the red switch, in case your your switches are arranged in series. And by that I mean that you have to turn this switch on first before this switch will 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 turn on. If this ground goes directly to the battery, uh, that means that this switch can turn on the motor directly. Uh, but most of them are going to have the signal wire, the blue signal wire attached from the red switch to the ground of this switch. And now, if the blue switch then is the, the, the signal wire that gets attached to the ground wire of the motor. So, a little bit complicated, um, but uh, hopefully that helps uh, for those of you who are, uh, who are working on these at home. Okay, this is just to finish the uh, the pump change out. We went ahead and put the the base back on, and there are seven standard Phillips screws that you need to line up. Uh, there's the little uh, outside plastic fittings that got to go that need to go over the posts. So that's that's that should be okay. It shouldn't be too big of a problem. We wanted to show you inside where if you ever get a leak at the elbow, um, there is the a uh, hose clamp nut right there and it's just a Phillips or if you need you can actually use a, a hex a hex fitting it looks like about an eight or a nine millimeter um, and then when you go ahead and put it together you make sure that the battery straps are out so that it's easy to get them uh, and also uh, just make sure that your wires are available and uh, they're in a position so that you're not going to be a, be in a problem uh, hooking them back up to the battery so that's it for the uh, changing out the pump.